Wednesday started like any other day at the Pleasant View Nursery and Garden, but as employees cleaned and prepared for the summer, something out of the ordinary was headed their way. We're really excited. Yeah. Never dreamed I'd come down here when this is going on. Somebody's going to be a little richer. Publishers Clearinghouse delivered a $1,000 check to a Richmond resident Wednesday. It was part of a nationwide promotion with 101 winners. It's kind of like our Publishers Clearinghouse way to help ease the economic burden that's going on and to show everyone that it's still fun to play sweepstakes and and turn people really do win. Rob Bash and Tatiana Stringaro normally work in the company's office in New York. Both delivered prizes before, but their experience didn't keep them from a little trouble along the way. Oh, the sign! It fell off? And we will give it one more go. After they fixed the sign, the prize patrol arrived at Deborah Presley's home. We are from Publishers Clearinghouse, and we have a surprise for you today. Presley was stunned to hear that she had won. I didn't think it was a gimmick on TV. I knew real people were winning, it just was never me. Before winning the prize, Presley was having a bad week. Her daughter-in-law had just undergone brain surgery, and her husband was preparing to leave for Iraq. But she said her week improved when the prize patrol knocked on her door. From Richmond, Kevin Mealy with Brian Unruh, Newslink, Indiana. Ready to open up? We are. All right. With a snip of the scissors. Two, three. Indiana Bureau of Motor Vehicles Commissioner Ron Steifer opens Portland's new license branch. Hi there, how can I help you? The Portland BMV opened its doors for the first time in two months today. I can help you here. The previous branch was closed at least six oh, really? times since June of 2007 after people complained about breathing problems, nausea, and rashes. Officials say the new branch will better serve the community. So it will not look like the BMV that folks are accustomed to. It will be very much of an improved layout. Commissioner Steifer says these chairs won't be used very often because the average wait time at this branch is six minutes under the state average. That's one of the many reasons it has residents walking through the new door. This is a lot nicer. The equipment looks to be a lot nicer and it's not quite as crammed. Seems to be a drastic improvement. Portland resident Mitch Hudson says he's grateful for the new location. It's nice it's open, otherwise I'd have to drive you know, 20 minutes south of here. The new branch opening hopes to smooth out what used to be a bumpy ride. Yes. In Portland, Laura Donaldson, Newslink, Indiana. Thank you, have a good day. Just yesterday, the National Tile Complex was filled with busy workers. Today, the building is nothing but rubble. We pretty much watched it the rest of the night. It went up in a quick in a matter of minutes. One person near the blaze really felt the heat. Our door right here got so hot we couldn't even touch the glass. Propane tanks exploding shook the neighborhood. I heard loud boom explosion going off. According to Anderson Fire Chief David Clendenin, about 200 people were evacuated from their homes, and with good reason. Ashes were flying everywhere. It looked like the sky was raining fire. It was scary. Clendenin added that the cause of the fire has not yet been determined and is still being investigated. The fire was first reported shortly after 11 last night. It's the first time I've seen nighttime turn daylight. There were people in the facility, but no one was injured. Firefighters were on the scene quickly. I just think the firemen did a wonderful job. They got everybody out and made sure that everybody was safe. People evacuated were allowed to return to their homes early today, but Clendenin cautions that smoke is still in the air and may be toxic. The firefighters expect to be there into the evening stuffing out hot spots and starting the cleanup process. In Anderson, this is Zach Horner, Newslink, Indiana. The Paralympics is a lot like what will happen at the Olympics later this summer, but for paralyzed athletes, one three. for Paul Morin, going to games like this is nothing new. He's played volleyball at Paralympics before, but he switched to tennis for this Paralympics at Beijing. Oh. And because he's new, he's a little unsure of his chances. Come on. I didn't see myself as a medal contender when I started making a push for it, but I think anything's possible now. Second, sir. But Warren won this weekend's tournament in Muncie and says getting on the court and playing is the best part about smaller tournaments. I love playing. Uh, I love competing. I love good points. Tournament organizer Joy Wegner says the social environment at such events makes it a great place for wheelchair tennis players. They hang around because it's easier in a wheelchair just to hang around so they talk and they're much more social with each other. Did I call a score right? Is it 30 all? The atmosphere created at the tournament is attractive for those who attend because it's not about winning or losing. It's about people who come and participate. Oh yeah, that's pretty much it. They thought and they could enough 
to reach out and create something to give people an opportunity to participate. Other players say they enjoy the tournament because it gives them something to look forward to. Bring family members with me to, to watch me play and, and um, just meet all kinds of great people when you, when you come to these tournaments. Come on. From Muncie, Joe Cermak, Newslink, Indiana. 30 all. Is it 30 all? People honked their horns in support as they drove by the picketing union workers of the Indiana American Water Company Wednesday morning. Union workers set up their picket line Monday afternoon after management and union negotiators failed to agree on a new contract. Testing employees said the old contract was unfair to workers who have been with the company for less than five years. Why is it taking five years for us to get paid, you know, the equal pay that everyone else is getting paid for doing the same job? A spokesperson for the water company reported that managers from as far away as Noblesville and Richmond pulled in for the absent workers during the strike. She also disputed the strikers claimed that the company's offer was unfair. I know that the company did present a contract offer that um, that it felt was fair and reasonable to, to the union. Protesters have been camped out here since noon on Monday, but some say they'd rather be on the other side of the fence. We don't want to be here. No, we want to go back to work, and, and uh, right now they're doing our jobs, and we want our jobs back. Wednesday afternoon, the strikers had a meeting and voted to do just that, go back to work. The union president reported there was an improvement to the contract, but offered no immediate details. In Muncie, Chickeny Taylor, News Indiana.